Well guys, welcome back. Ron's not here with another video for you. This is video log, build log four, uh, picking up where I left off from the last time. And I was about to get into the loop order. And then really once that's set, we're gonna start filling and testing the loop. And I've got a bunch of other things that have been done to the system as well. So welcome back and let's get on with it. All right, guys. So I have the, as I mentioned, the fans are installed and, and they're, uh, the, the fan hub is uh, got the cables going out the back to the other side on both sides here so that I can uh, cable them up later. Uh, so right now what I'm going to do is take you through um, the fittings that I use. I probably won't remember the names of all of them, but I'll do my best uh, to describe them to you. So let's see, let's start with the, um, the GPU loop. So of course we have the Singularity Computers Proteum Medium Reservoir with the silver, uh, the frosted acrylic and the silver trim. And we have the Proteum uh, D5 uh, pump top with the plate removed so I could just mount the reservoir directly to it. And I have the D5 uh, silver with a silver accent um, uh, cover for the pump. And inside that is a, uh, a Vario, um, just a, I believe it might be XSPC uh, Vario. So it is the D5 pump with the, uh, with the power um, adjustable uh, knob on there. So that's there. And coming out into one drain port, I have a uh, one, two, a triple rotary. Um, Bits power, you know, was at uh, 90 degree fitting, and so that's a rotating on the end going into the pump, and also at this end here, because that helps when. And this, uh, the the uh, silver shiny bits power um, T valve uh, ha requires it's just threaded on both ends, so it that requires a um, a male to male fitting. So that's what I have right there. And then I have the T screwed into that. And I will have a silver plug on the end. Uh, so coming up here, we have another, just the exact same thing. And it's a uh, triple rotary bits power silver shiny coming up here. Then I have a 90 degree, uh, just a regular 90 degree, uh, you know, right angle um, bits power fitting uh, with a single rotary. So that can spin. And then this is the 16 millimeter um, compression fitting, silver shiny. So again, all of these are silver shiny. I'll stop saying that. So that's screwed into there. And then, of course, the tubing that I'm using is the Bits Power Brass Link tubing. So that's brass construction, but it's got the silver uh, shiny finish on it. And that's a 16 millimeter OD, uh, 35 millimeter thickness of the wall. And they're only available in 300 millimeter lengths. At least that's that I, all that I could find. So here it is right here. Um, let's see if you can, I don't know if you can read that. I have the, the uh, lens set for manual focus so you can see everything crisp and cleanly right here. So if you want to zoom in, you should be able to see that. Um, okay. I, I ordered these either through performance PCs or Amazon. Performance PCs through Amazon. Most everything, all of the, the parts... Either I had it in stock already from years of building systems that I didn't use in my stock or I bought it from uh, performance PCs or through Amazon. And recently some of the stuff from Amazon was coming from a company called Titan Rig. So that's where I get some of these. So here is a piece right here that I cut and fit. And then same thing here, it's the 16 millimeter compression fitting, silver shiny. Another one of those uh, triple rotary uh, bits power um, 90 degree fittings that take me into the GPU block. So that's the um, bits power um, GTX um, 1080 Ti RGB and that has a RGB controller built into it and so that lick, that's supposed to light up. I hope that it will be controlled and can be controlled from the motherboard so we'll be playing with that. And then coming into the GPU, uh, we again, we have a, um, uh, that is a, um, I think that's a, yeah, another one of those um, male-to-male -male 
fitting so it could screw into this the 90 degree and then going into the block and then coming out of those uh, those I believe are both um, they're Aqualink pipes so these are adjustable Aqualink pipes now some of these fittings I, I mentioned most of them, most of them are from my stock they're bits power but I've been using um, Barrow B-A-R-R-O-W and some of these are Barrow fittings and you can't tell, I mean, the, if you look up close, you'll be able to see the pattern on, so, on some of the fittings are a little bit different, the pattern of the, on the outside. Um, but that's about it. Now, some are distinctly different, but you, for this build, you can't tell. And I don't know that I'm going to remember all of them. But So there's two of these, and the length on that is a 41 to 69 millimeter Aqualink adjustable tubing. Then we have a Bits Power plug on the other side. Coming out, I have another... 16 uh, millimeter OD um, compression fitting, a piece of the uh, Bits Power uh, non camphor tubing that I cut to fit here, another one of the 16 OD compression fittings. And then up here, I have a number of um, fittings. So I, I, right here is a, I think it's a 15 millimeter extension. Then I have here um, a female, it's a coupling fitting. Oh, no, that's another extension fitting, yep. So I got two extensions. One's a 15 or 10, and that's a 15. And then it goes into another one of these 90-degree uh, triple rotaries. And then it goes into a 90-degree uh, double rotary, rotary uh, fitting. And then it goes into a, I believe that's a D-plug up at the top. So that's a bits power. could be a, uh, a Barrow uh, D-plug. Um, so I'll show you that's this side so far I'll stick on this side and then I'll, I'll turn it around and show you the other side now the GPU loop starts out of course the same uh, dual um, reservoir configuration same fill port exactly I tried to keep the, um, the symmetry of course coming down here um, and the beauty of having this on a rotary is you know then I can tilt this up connect the thing to it so uh, you know it's not not a, it's not you know some people think that you got to connect the hose and it's a pain in the ass to get in here well with the triple rotary you just spin it around the way you need to all right so that's that now coming out of the pump um, we have another one of the triple rotary right 90 degrees and going into a regular dual uh, single rotary 90 degree and they're connected by another one of those male to male um, fittings and I think the disc, that's like maybe seven and a half inches. I'm not sure what the distance might be, five millimeter. But it's male to male, so I can screw the two together. Another 90 degree, single rotary. And then here I have a um, female. Like I said, it's about a 10 or 10.5. It's a uh, female uh, rotary because this has a threaded end and this has a threaded end. So this is a female coupling, so I can screw both together. And then uh, another one of the Aqualink pipes, either Barrow or Bits Power. And the Barrow ones are significantly cheaper, by the way. So, uh, you know, we'll see how well they do over time because this is the first time I've used them. But, you know, if they work as good as Bits Power, then I'm going to be looking to buy a lot more of the Barrow ones. Um, again, the same thing. So I try to keep some symmetry on this side is the, um, the dual coupling. So it's female to female threaded. Then a short aqualink pipe i forget what the, the 31 i think there's, there's there's like a really short one 11 to 16 and then i think 16 to 32 i can't remember uh, but that's a short aqualink pipe and then again another one of these um 90 degree triple rotaries going into a 90 degree it's the right angle one with um uh single single rotary and then at the bottom here, that's an extension fitting going into a Bits Power fill port. And I've also used Barrow uh, fill ports too. Actually, this one right here, this is a black one. I'm not going to use these two, so I have a, another fitting. I'm going to put a black barrel fitting and then put a black cap on it so it looks nice. They're not used. So that's what's going on. And the reason why I did it like this, I could have come straight down. Uh, not straight down. I would have had to make some turns. But try to keep, again, the angles. I mean, you got something going that way this is going to come out we'll see how it looks i can change it up but i thought that looked pretty cool like that so um so that's what's going on so this goes into the bottom then goes into the radiator and then comes uh, out of the rad and makes its way over and this goes into comes out in a 
Uh, I believe this is a, uh, a D plug down at the bottom. I think it's a 20 or 25 millimeter D plug right down here. These are the same. Then a yeah, screws into an extension fitting, and then a 16, uh, you know, 16 OD um, compression fitting, a piece of cut uh, bits power camphor uh, piping tubing that I cut, another 16 OD fitting, uh, 90 degree single rotary right angle, another 90 degree um, right angle, and then looks like I think it's a 40 millimeter and a um, yeah, 40 millimeter and a 50 millimeter um, extension fitting. The exact same thing coming out of the CPU, the 40 and the 15 into the right angle, and then the 16 OD compression, piece of pipe I cut, 16 OD compression. Um, this is that uh, female coupling. Uh, yeah, that's a fem these are two of those female couplings. They're uh, female to female, so I can screw the compression and screw the D-plug into it. And then it goes into the, um, back into the D-plug down into the basement. So, let's take a look at what we got going on on this side. see if you can see down in the bottom uh, yep you can see all right so uh, this is the front panel cables and the pump pump cables and uh, temperature probes coming out the back here but talking about the pipe so when the when we came out of the uh, mid mid chamber out of the pump we can we come into a, a D plug there's a, I think it's like a 25 millimeter D plug, then into a male to male fitting and into one of those Q blocks, this right here with the plug on the bottom and another D plug into the rad. Coming out of the rad, we have a couple of uh, fittings there that looks like a 15 and a 20 millimeter extension fitting, I think, or no, I think that's a D plug and going into this another Q block and then coming out the other side is a male to male um, uh, fitting with the T valve on it and a plug at the end. And then here we have a, um, a 15 or 10 or 15 millimeter um, extension fitting, a 25 millimeter extension fitting, a 16 millimeter OD compression piece of cut pipe, another compression fitting, a coupler. This is a female to female coupler right here. And then another 16 OD compression fitting, a long piece of pipe. Uh, and a 16 OD compression fitting, then and a 90 uh, triple rotary right here. Then uh, this is a compression fitting so I can easily remove and take this right off. So that's like a 20 millimeter D plug, D plug right here. And then we have a 40, at least a 40 or 50 millimeter extension fitting. And that takes it back up into the, um, into the, uh, back up into the, that takes it into the, C, uh, it's coming out of the, or into the CPU, sorry about that, into the CPU, right? So it comes down through the rad and then it comes out into the CPU. Then coming out of the CPU, this is just a sure, like a 25 millimeter D plug right here, another uh, triple rotary 90, a um, 40 millimeter or 50 millimeter extension fitting, the 16 millimeter OD uh, compression fitting, piece of cut pipe, compression fitting, extension, f uh, like a 25 millimeter extension fitting, another 90 triple rotary, then a D plug, uh, is that a D plug? Oh uh, yeah, D plug into going back up and then forgot to show you that sorry about that for spinning it around all the time I'm messing up my making my uh, ESD mat a little wrinkly okay so coming back up over here we have a 40 or 50 millimeter extension fitting the coming out of the, the pass-through uh, bits power or barrel uh, fill port pass-through 16 OD compression, piece of cut pipe, pipe, another compression, again a female um, coupler, 
Compression fitting, piece of cut pipe, same dimension as that. Compression fitting, and here we have a uh, coupler, a 20, it looks like a 20 millimeter extension fitting, and then another 41 for, uh, extent, uh, Aqualink um, adjustable um, valve to get, take it to the top. And obviously you can see all those guys are exactly the same. All right. Now we'll go back to the other side. Okay, and up in the top, up in the top here, coming out of the GPU loop, we have a, like a I think it's 15 millimeter extension, a 90 degree single rotary, a compression fitting, piece of cut pipe. Uh, compression fitting. When I was building this portion of the loop, I didn't have any more of those couplers that I've been showing you, um, and nobody had any in stock. I couldn't find any anywhere, so I bought Phobia has a, a coupling, but it's not as pretty. But since it's just up here in the back, that's what I used, and it it helped fill the the, uh, the space just right. So this is again a dual uh, female coupling right here, but that's one that's made by Phobia. Then a compression fitting, another piece of cut pipe. Compression fitting, another one of those Phobia couplings. And then a, an Aqualink uh, pipe that adjusts into a right angle, a single rotary. And a just to get the spacing right between the rad, there's a, about a 7.5 or 10 millimeter extension. That goes into the radiator. Then coming out of the radiator, I have a 40 millimeter extension fitting. A... Um, 90 degree, uh, only that's a triple uh, dual rotary. Then it goes into a another f like a 40 millimeter extension fitting, a, a a about a 15 millimeter extension fitting, and then another extension fitting about the same thing, and then a D plug, and then a triple rotary 90 degree, another. Uh, Extension fitting about 15, I think a 20 millimeter extension fitting, and another 40, and then that's what takes it down into the um, into the the reservoir for the uh, CPU for the GPU loop. And then over here is where we come out of that long tube that came up, and then we have a 90 degree single rotary, a uh, Aqualink adjustable pipe there from Bits Power or Barrow again. And then over here is like a 40 millimeter extension, uh, ex extension, 15 millimeter extension, and then uh, 90 degree rotary. So, use just about all of my uh, stock on the extension fittings that I've had. And um, yep. Now, some people might ask, why didn't I cut a piece of tubing here? Again, there's nowhere to go. I mean, in order to cut a fit, I have to be able to, you know screw them in and then if you have it in exact same length you're going to need to have either these T's, these telescoping uh, Aqualink pipes or D plugs. So anywhere you see these physically fit you can only to fit these in here I was able to cut these up right and I had couplings and then of course I had to use a uh, D plug or a Aqualink uh, adjustable tube or sometimes both. So that is the um, that's the tubing runs I think I got them all. Now I have the uh, the pump cables here. Uh, now it's going to be time to uh, test the loop. I want to test to make sure that all these connections were good and I don't have any leaks um, before I go and start wiring up stuff. And uh, you know, like the uh, like the uh, Aquero and all the lighting and you know anything else so now's the time to check that and make sure everything looks good so uh, you guys can come along for the ride let me go get set up and I'll be right back the moment of truth one thing that um, you guys if you don't know when you buy a uh, proteum reservoir um, you have to it's very important you have to use one of these uh, syringes to fill it up okay so if you ever watch um, you know Daniel on his channel what he does is he uh, he puts these in here, right? And then he, oh, but he doesn't he doesn't create the spillage that I just created. So you you uh, 
very slowly. Fill up the res, and then you don't spill like I do. All right, so you then, you know, you, uh, oh, and of course you need a Pyrex dish as well. So these are, these are, you know, key. So there's a special little uh, instruction sheet that comes with the protium reservoirs that uh, says you need to um, also have these in your arsenal to fill the reservoir. Okay, that's all BS. I was just messing with you guys. You don't need to use this. Although this is good for tight spaces, as you see, if you do it nicely like that. Now, I will probably make a mess, but I like to usually use a funnel to get as much as I can in there. But what it does mean is I have to, I can't take the easy way, I have to stand up. So let's see if this works a little bit better for me. Of course, I didn't screw it in all the way, so yeah, this is not... Uh, let's see if I can do this again. So the, the joke is pretty much on, he, on me, because I'm, I'm getting leaks from my, from my freaking... From my funnels. All right, so let's get this cleaned up, and then let's get serious here. Again, I was just joking. You do not have to use the, uh, but you know what? This is something to be said about using this thing. I think uh, I think it might actually be better. All right, so I'm going to try to use this again not have any, have any major leakage and I know if I try to use I have a gallon of distilled water here but I know if I try to pour out of that I'll probably even make a bigger mess so let's see if I can do this Oh, I know why I'm getting the spillage is because I have the plug out of the top so that when I do turn the pump on, there's air that's going to come in. So those there's not a leak from my my uh, funnel connection. I'm pouring too fast and it's coming out the top. So I probably need to uh, temporarily put a plug in the top. Yeah, maybe not. Oh, but now I'm going to need to turn a pump on. So we'll just have both at the ready. Okay. So now I have. Okay, we got. Uh, well, I'll be able to see any leakage there. I have my trusty power brick that I showed you when I was testing the lights. I have that right here. I have it connected up to a power strip that can always always also pull it. So um, right now we're going to check the GPU loop. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this guy in. All right. And I'll do, let's get a, let's get some power going to this pump. See if we have any leakage. Yes, we do. All right, so let me fix that. It's one of my Aqualink connections. And finally got this guy tightened up. So I had some leaks coming from here and also a little dripping coming from here. So these Aquapipe tubes, you got to make sure you get them cranked down. And also I have, I think I have this pump set on four and a half. So almost at the top speed. So it's putting some pressure through but um, 
I think I've got the leaks solved now. It's nice to see that these, uh, you know, there's nothing happening at any of the, um, you know, at these, uh, this fitting here, here, or in the back either. That nice long run. So we're looking good. All right, now it's time to uh, try the CPU loop. See uh, what kind of luck we have there. So I can, for now, get started putting some coolant into the res. move the power over to the chipset loop all right and I should be prepared excuse me for getting in front of you there uh -oh. all right so so far in that CPU loop Nothing but over here on the GPU loop, we do have a little leak again from this aqua pipe up here. All right, well, I'm going to come back to that fitting. I did try to tighten it up with a wrench as best I could, so I will work on that uh, when I get power to that again. For now, let's get this uh, CPU loop. That's my fault. Power splitter back here. So coming out of my pack, I can power both pumps now. And see, it looks like the CPU loop is doing fine now, aside from that uh, deep plug uh, leak from not having, the, uh, not having it tightened up properly. And the GPU will see. The one area I still having some leakage, and I tried to tighten it down as best I could. Again, I'm going to have to get a pair of pliers if I, if I need to, to tighten up this uh, fitting up near the top. But let's give it a shot. In the back, by the way, it's been great. So knock on wood, I have not had actually no, no leaks, no issues at all. So there we go. And let's see if anything results. I'll check that out. How do you like that? Look at the levels. They happen to be almost exactly the same. That's pretty cool. And again, I'm just using um, distilled water for testing. I will be putting colored fluid uh, coolant in here. I'm not sure what yet, but I will be. Um, so let's see what happens. And by the way, thank you to, I need to look up and see, but um, somebody had posted a comment that the tube in this reservoir, that return was a little bit longer than that one. And so I didn't have it screwed. I didn't have this one or that one screwed in all the way. So we've adjusted it now and everything is, should be about the same. So we're looking good. And... Uh, Okay, I got a drip right there, but I think that was from before, and we'll see. That's it. 
D plug leakage and then aqu the aqua pipe aqua pipes had some uh, some issues with uh, them not being tight enough and up here so that's it everything else nothing at any of the uh, pipes that I cut and put into the um, to the compression fittings and I'll show you how I cut that pipe because they're non chamfered but in order to get them to fit into these fittings, you have to chamfer them, and you chamfer them basically by cutting them. So anyway, I'll, uh, I'll show you that probably next in the video. Take a quick uh, detour and take a look at how I did those. Okay, for those of you who might be interested in using this hardline tubing, I am using Bits Power non-chamfer brass link tubing. Uh, this is the 16 millimeters, the thickest version, they, or the, the widest diameter they have just like the PETG or the acrylic 16 mil. This is in shining silver. They do have uh, brass and I think white and black, I think. Um, and the length, the max length that I found are 300 millimeter lengths. Um, they don't have them longer than that. So in my build, you will not see anything longer than that. And if I do have to make a longer run, I'll be, um, you know, have to um, put something in between it to connect up a uh, couple of you know some kind of block or something extension block to be able to run more than one so uh, it's not like a crystal uh, crystal link um, the multi-link ones where you slide them in I thought maybe there would be an adapter for that but I haven't found one so I'm just gonna have to you know have coupling fitting or a flow meter between them to do lengths that are longer than the uh, than what they have there and also in order to use it with a fitting like this you have to chamfer the edge this is the way it non-chamfer it comes straight cut right out of clean cut right out of whatever machine they they cut these from but um, you would need to chamfer it you have to cut it basically and then the way you cut it is using one of these um, you know metal cutting uh, wheels so this happens to be a rigid you can get you can get any one you want the key is that you got to have one that has the right size for your tubing so in this case this is a 1 8 to 5 8 outside diameter or three millimeter to 16 millimeter and that's what I have here so that's what I need and what you got to do here is you open up your wheel and you put the pipe in the device and the shortest cut for me I like to have uh, some of it resting right here because I think maybe it wobbles and it won't get the wheel cutting in the same spot so at a minimum you're gonna lose some on the edge of your tubes so what I do is I put it on I get it in the groove It'll sit right inside of this groove right here, and the wheel comes down on it. And then I try to rotate it the same one. I don't put too much pressure on it. And what I'll do is I'll just spin it probably 10 to 20 revolutions or more to start getting the first, the groove centered and working. What I like to do is not have the wheel, if you tighten it up too tight, the wheel will wobble and it also might deform the edge of the tube and if it does that then you're not going to be able to get it into your fitting so right now I'm going to go about 20 to 25 revolutions Then I'm going to turn this wheel about a quarter of a turn. That's it. Just fine, fine movements. <coughs> Excuse me. See, I'm already getting... But it's going to go to the right, so we'll see how it comes out. Damn. Start it again inside a little bit.
all of a sudden you'll start hearing it dig in. Hey, I don't know if you can hear that. There you go. And this came out nice and clean so it stayed near that edge. Yeah, you can't really tell. I guess if it does go off, now you don't want it going off center like that. See all those scores? That's too wide. It only went maybe one or two and the cut came out nice and clean. And then I use this, uh, you know, reamer here to clean out any anything along the inside. And then a little bit of this on the outside. So anything, any burrs don't gouge your um, o-ring and once you have that done and now this pipe I keep I wear this ring and I got to make sure I don't scratch up the pipe so you might want to take your rings off slide this on just like the PETG or acrylic and then you kind of spin it into it I like to spin it in until it bottoms out and then you have it a cut tampered piece of hard acrylic with a uh, 60 millimeter compression fitting for rigid tubing. Same one that you would use for acrylic or PETG. You can use it on these pipe ones. All right. So I hope that helps. All right. Next up, some cabling. Start cabling the system. So I've got uh, various cables here, some I may have shown you before. First of all, for the fa fans that are, uh, the fan um, on the radiator at the bottom, the four fans and the, I, I need to run an extension all the way up to the top. So I've got a bunch of uh, extension cables that I can connect here. There's a bunch that probably do the job. Even more, a couple of little bit longer ones. So got a bunch of fan extension cables that I'm going to daisy chain together. I might make my own, but they're hidden back out of the way. And If it was a customer system, I'd make my own cable for that, but I think I'm just going to daisy chain a bunch up. Then I have an extension cable for the audio. So you need this. Is, uh, this will take your standard audio cable that is coming from the front panel and extend it so it reaches in this monstrous case. So I've used this guy before, so I've got that. Then I've got a couple of different USB cables I've got to connect up to the Aquero. Uh, so this one, this one's pretty long, I think. Maybe what's that? I don't know. That's a, that's a good length. And then here's another one. This is an older one that I've had for a while. And it's just going to peek in into the case. I guess it's about the same length. Yeah, they're the same length. This one's just sleeker, so if I need to get it through a corner. So I've got one USB cable. I think I only need one going to the uh, motherboard. That motherboard only has one USB 2 header. Then I have here extensions for two pin wire, which uh, would be my temperature probes, the only thing that I would need these for. Most of these came from, you can buy these separate, but I think most of these came off of uh, um, BitPhoenix uh, fans that have the LEDs and you can have them jumpered so they're always on or connected to a light controller. So that's where a lot of these came from. So that, that we have to look at installing. Then we have here the custom cables that I had. And I think I'm going to stick with this for the color scheme. So most of the case you see is all black and silver. And if there was a sparkly silver coolant, I've seen 
Jay's Two Cents has something, but it's not available on the, on the uh, not available to the public yet. That would be really cool. But for now, I uh, most of my cables are heavily red with a black accent, if you will. See, most of it's all red with the one black stripe. And I, you know what? That might be fine. There's only three places that you're going to see cables. Um, these are all power cables to devices, so they're all hidden in the back. You're not going to see those. Uh, this is also another SATA cable in the back. You're not going to see that. Uh, this is another just standard Molex to power the Aquero and the pumps. You're not going to see that. This is, so oh, here we go. This is a, oh, this is an EPS cable. So you would see this sticking out the bottom. So this is one cable that's external. And actually all you're going to see is the very, the very bottom that comes out and goes into the motherboard. So we'll see what that looks like. Uh, this is the other one, uh, the other EPS 12 volt motherboard cable. Uh, of course, here's the power supply cable, so you will see this come through this portion. And I got to make sure I get some good combs on these. And this is more Molex power. You're not going to see that. More Molex power. So this is mostly the power, and these are the tips are the only ones you're going to see sticking out of the case. So um, <clears throat> we've got that. And then we have all my MDPC sleeve black SATA cables. So those, you'll see a few of those. So that's going to be OK. A uh, little short jumper that I had made for something. Oh, to go between the um, power adjusts, I think. That's how I, I used those in the previous build. And then here we have. All of the, oh, this is a really cool one. I love that we've got um, um, Paragon made for me. These cables were made all by, designed for Paragon. This guy's great, fantastic, highly recommend him. Um, but he made this great one so I can put four SSDs in the Kate Slabs mount right next to each other. So this is a perfect cable. So this will be used. And then there's also a split off here to go to the two hard drives, the two uh, large five and a quarter inch space. So again, you're not going to see these because they're behind in the back of the case. And then these are all the uh, graphics cables. And so here we have um, connecting to the CPU. And then these are the ones that connect to the motherboard, I mean to the, uh, to the GPU, so the graphics. So I'm trying to see here. Uh, I have the EVGA connector. So I should all I should need. You will see a little bit of this. Uh, come on. Okay. Sorry, they're just all connected. They were all just thrown in that bag. All right. <clears throat> so yeah. So I have the six plus twos to give me the eight pins to power those EVGA power links. So I will be doing that. So you'll see the tips of these coming in and um, I'm thinking that's it from for cables that what I don't have here is uh, I don't have the cables for the LEDs so I haven't decided uh, how I'm gonna split it yet I am going to use I am going to use this um, LSB01 so that I can s control all the fans are going to come off of out of this split box and this box then will go into the motherboard so I can control all of the fans with one box one controller and then I'm going to have LED strips I think on the uh, controlled separately uh, through another one of these so that I can have multiple if I need it so I had to have another one of these coming to be able to uh, support at least what I'm thinking of right now but there'll be another video or a portion of a video for that in the build log all right, so I'm going to go ahead and get started mounting these cables into the case. And especially, I'm curious to see what these look like. So I think I'm going to put these in first and then uh, give you guys a peek, see what you think. All right. All right, so those are the cables that I showed you that I have in there, the red and the black. I, I don't know, I guess with some red coolant, 
you know the splash of red would stand out but I don't know I, I don't have combs on the cables to train them nicely and neatly I do like the AVGA though I like the uh, cables coming into the side of that but again I think uh, I don't I don't know I, I think I need to do away with uh, the red it's just too much maybe if it was all black with some small red accents that might be all right but I think uh, I'm gonna go with uh, something different but for now that's what it is and um, yeah so let me uh, connect up some of the other cables for the system and uh, get those in there I, I forgot to mention the front IO panel cables obviously I didn't have them on the bench but uh, they're all connected up I just got to get them wired in there so so yeah, let me uh, continue work on cables, but as far as power cables, again, the rest of the power cables I'll use, the red and black, you won't see them because they're going to be on the back side, but um, for the ones coming out the front, I think I'm going to do it a little bit different. All right, guys, so still piecing some things together, uh, running into a couple issues every now and then. One of the things I have here is this US3B 3.0 header from the front panel of the STH-10. It just about makes it, but there's no way I can get it in there securely into this three-point, uh, into that header there. The other one works just fine. They're both the same length, so one goes right here, no issues, but this one won't make it. So I went online, and I finally found a USB 3.0 extension header. And this is called a USB 3.0 20-pin internal header male-female extension cable. And they also call it a low-profile. And I believe, let's see who makes it. I don't know who makes it, but I got it on Newegg. So this is what it looks like. And what you do is you plug this end. Let's get this out of the way. Into the motherboard. Right there. Right, and then you plug the other end into um, to the to the cable right here. So hopefully you can see that. And uh, anyway, that's the plan. So I'm going to see if that works, and then I'm also going to heat shrink it. The other thing that I did is uh, I <coughs> heat shrunk the um, USB cable end here. For the, I put some heat shrink over the connector. It was like the rainbow colors of uh, USB wire sticking out. That goes to the Aquero. This is the front panel header. I put some heat shrink tubing on that to um, hold the ASUS header to the little, in, you know, the little discrete connection. And then I also got an extension cable. It's an all black, and I also put some heat shrink on there too. That's a to power the motherboard because I'm going to have multiple items in the PCI bus so only the two graphics cards but I've got a uh, Intel uh, 750 NVMe PCI Express card that I'll be putting in there and they also got a something brand new that I'll show you at a later video that's also going into one of these slots and then this last cable over here I don't know if you see it uh, this is the um, audio, audio header and so that's also in there. So anyway, so the purpose of this little segment here is to show you this cable. And like I said, it's a USB 3.0 20-pin header, male-female extension. So, and you can get it on Newegg. I'm going to go ahead and uh, make sure the connections work here or that they plug up. I notice there is one pin missing here. I'm assuming that that's normal. And... Uh, yeah, there's a pin missing also in the headers down there, so it makes sense. All right, I'm going to do that, heat shrink it, and then make sure it looks somewhat decent uh, in there. And it's nice that it's all black, too, but I would rather have it covered than just bare wire. So I'll show you what it's like when I'm done. I've got some cables there spread out, and because of the heat shrink, I can't bend them flat against the panel. I want to make sure that they're in there snugly and looks like I've got my USB 3.0. I wish I could find the 
the Gen 2 for USB 3.1 and, and create a connector for it on the front panel, but I can't seem to find those right now. So, all right, that's it for that little piece of uh, that little segment we'll call specialty cables. Well, guys, that's about it for this video. Uh, it's been pretty long. I uh, certainly hope you learned something and enjoyed at least some bits of it. And if you did, please like and favorite. And if you're so inclined, please subscribe. That's it from Ron's and Nut for this video log. I'll be coming around shortly back to you with another one as we continue on this STH-10 uh, build. So uh, thanks for watching.